love. That's you. That's you too. No. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's how. And this is how the virus spreads. Hey, it's Hassan. Uh, I hope you're safe. I hope you're well. I hope you're with your family. And I hope you're in good spirits wherever you are in the world. I wanted to check in with you guys because as promised, I wanted to put out some videos. I miss seeing everybody at the show. I miss seeing my friends. I miss the creative routine. So as promised, I wanted to put out some more digital content with you guys to show you guys how I've been living, what's been going on with me. And that's why we have put together this brand new series that's just like what you've experienced before, but a little bit different given the circumstances. This is, play the music. From a distance. Let's begin. Welcome to our kitchen. We're gonna play a quick game. Bina, you're the contestant. It's called, is this ranch or is this masala? Ranch or masala? Ranch. No, this is masala, this is open. Your mom put masala in this. Is this ranch or is this masala? Masala. Wrong. Oh, snap, no it's not. Masala, you're right. Ranch or masala? Masala. Yes. Why in God's name do we own these? Flavor. No. Silver lining to the quarantine? Getting to share a meal with a loved one. Babe, we rarely get to have lunch together. Today I'm gonna make you some lunch. Is that cool? Sure. All right, today I'm gonna make you my specialty. Peanut butter and jelly. Start with some bread, right? Two pieces of wheat bread. We got peanut butter and jelly. All right, let's start off with this. I'm gonna put peanut butter on one side. Is that cool with you? Yeah, okay. Just spread it on. Uh, just keep it thick, two C's. All right, there you go, like that. All the way to the edges. I'm not gonna, you know what I mean? Cut corners, make sure every bite per square inch has peanut butter on it. You got some left over here. Now, normally I would uh, lick it. I'm not gonna do that because you're recording. So I'm gonna hygienically wipe, wipe. Let's go get the jelly. It's almost done. I did not look before. Okay, spread, spread, spread. And spread it. And you are here. Okay, people make fun of my knife skills, but. What are you doing? I'm making a heart. Who said romance is dead? You ready? Okay, welcome to Hassan's Book Club, where I tell you about my favorite books. They're not really my favorite books. I have no free time now, so these are the books that I have to read to my two-year-old daughter. Our first book is called If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. This is about a mouse that breaks into a house and literally takes everything from a poor boy. To me, this story is indicative of unchecked capitalism. You have a vagrant mouse that comes in from the outside. It has really no checks or balances on itself and it takes, and it takes, and it takes, and completely destroys the system, literally, until he comes full circle, asks for a bailout, and then at the very end, on top of it, after it's destroyed everything, wants more milk and cookies. This book is called The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. It's about human beings, when given any opportunity, destroy literally everything around them. Yeah, I'd be upset too, look. This boy is given an apple tree and t literally until the day he dies, he destroys the tree until he's just an old man sitting on a stump left with nothing. This is also probably Shel Silverstein's magnum opus and this was the picture they chose to put on the back. What do you think of that? Just a photo of him looking directly at the sun. 
This book is called There's a Bear in My Chair. Once again, a consistent theme that I've found in children's stories is animals pretty much don't follow the rules. Oh, great. You want to watch this? Okay, this is The Snowy Day by uh, Ezra Jack Keats. Really great story. This is about a little boy who wears a really super cute red hoodie, experiences his first snow. Look at that. So happy. It's snowing. He slides down. Look at that. He's experiencing everything. He wakes up. Wow, it's snowing. Oh my God, there's so much snow outside. Look at that. I'm putting my little footprints in the snow. Great. Look, I can even drag a little stick. I can use a stick to hit a tree. Down comes the snow, it plops on my head. I keep marching along, I'm enjoying the day, and then look, a bunch of big kids throw snowballs at me. So what are you doing these days in terms of just like self-care? Now that COVID has run rampant and you know, days don't really have any structure or organization, what are you, what are you doing in terms of that? Who did that? Do you feel like now, um, given China's relationship? Okay, sometimes, which, which one do you want? Let me ask you this. Get... Yeah, okay. Hey guys, welcome to a very special edition of Deep Cuts with my newborn son. Uh, I'm burping him right now. So um, if he passes gas, please forgive him. Let's get into it. All right. If you could make up a crazy thing that happened in 2020 on top of everything that's already happened, what would you add? Uh, I think this would be so hilarious, but if this entire COVID situation made us finally get free healthcare for everybody in this country, I think that would be incredible and amazing. I also think it's really funny that Republicans are now calling for social welfare programs. All right. And you are right about all those cruise ships. They want to bail out now, even though they aren't American companies. You have to feel a little good about the cruise ship industry shutting down. Dude, we told you guys about the cruise ship industry. Everybody was giving us flack when we first put out the episode. They're like, no, I like going on cruises. And I'm like, I'm telling you, they're floating Petri dishes. And now that we've crossed the Rubicon and we're in this post-COVID world, we all see how terrifying cruises are. Now with the bailout situation, I, um, I hope that it's not just the CEOs that get the money from this. I hope that all the employees and the people that work on these cruise ships see a significant payday from this entire situation. All right, if you were transported 400 years into the past with no clothes or anything else, how would you prove that you were from the future? Uh, that question is trying to get me caught up because you guys know that when Galileo told people that the earth revolves around the sun, they threw him in prison, right? So what I would do is I would lay low. I wouldn't try to make a scene. I would just try to observe what everybody's doing. But if I really wanted to terrify them, I would tell them about the internet. I'd be like, hey, there's this place where it, you know how like you guys have the news? They'd be like, what's the news? And I'm like, you know how you guys like tell each other through oral tradition what's happening in the world? They'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, imagine there's a place where everybody's talking about the news, but it never ends. They'd be like, what's that place called? And I'd be like, Twitter. And they'd be like, that place sounds like hell. I'm like, yeah, I know, it is. Hey, Hassan, I'm a teacher in my class and I have watched Homecoming King and an episode of Patriot Act. They love your stuff. My question is, what do you recommend for stressed out AP students as you have experience, especially those who work their asses off this year? First of all, thank you so much for showing our show in your classroom. It's, a, it's pretty amazing how many um, teachers have told me they play episodes of Patriot Act in their classroom. And, and first of all, look, teachers, I know you guys deserve so much more in terms of resources and pay, but come on, you can't just be showing episodes of the show like you're a substitute teacher. If you're a full-time faculty, you gotta bring it. You can't just be rolling in the, that little cart and then just play episodes of Patriot Act. Um, but in regards to your question, um, I would say, look, students are stressing out right now. I went through that too, as a super kind of ambitious kid that was trying to go to med school. We all saw how that played out. Um, this actually came from a teacher. I remember getting a B and we'd, we would actually have to take report cards home. And I told my teacher when he gave it to me, I was like, no, I can't, I can't bring this home. And he's like, hey man, like, 
a B is okay. A B means you did pretty good. And I was like, yeah, I, I just can't bring this home. Like it will be the end of me. I will not come to school tomorrow if I, if I bring this home. And he was like, you are who you are. And at the time I took that as an insult, but it is true, man. Like you can't let these things break you. Do your best. Um, really study, like actually give it a good concerted effort, but let the chips fall where they may. Everybody can't be a doctor, you know, like, yeah. That's awful advice. What do you mean? <laughs> All right. Now that we're self quarantining, what's the one thing you wish you never complained about now that you can't do it? All right. Living in New York city, I used to make fun of times square so much. I, can't wait to go back to Times Square. I used to make fun of the crowds. I used to make fun of the M&M store. I used to make fun of that like weird Elmo. I miss weird ass Elmo and I miss the crowds and I miss the M&M store and I'm dying to go back. All right, what are your top three self quarantine activities? Uh, number one, spend time with family. Number two, uh, watch Hallmark movies with Bina. <laughs> and number three, um, the FaceTime friends that you haven't had a chance to talk to in a long time. All right. Priorities, I know, but wondering if you'll trim the beard and hair, or if you'll just let it go wild for the season. I had to trim the beard because unlike other late night hosts, I can't just let it go wild. Otherwise I'll end up on a watch list. Uh, in terms of the hair, look, we're social distancing, so it's getting long. You know, the sides aren't as tight as they used to be. So it's just going to get long until we can get back into society. All right. Yeah. Sir, I hope you really consider social distancing from those Crocs. Uh, I did. That's why I'm wearing these. Indoor Uggs, baby.